Yeah, so I couldn't really think of a clever enough cold opening for this video, so fuck it. Unlike the movie itself, we're gonna keep this video quick and to the point. Yep, you read that title correctly. And while I can already hear the sound of the many, many Twitter fingers in the back of my head like I'm Simba in that fucking canyon, so my god, before you head off to the comments section to clown my ass and belittle my cinematic intelligence and just my intelligence in general into the shadow realm, I asked the court to allow me to present my case. So Oppenheimer, a boring piece of cinema. You see, when it comes to the Hollywood atmosphere and more importantly the movie Oppenheimer specifically, it's hard to think of another movie that is so widely benefited as a whole from the times, the direction, and the overall landscape of the Hollywood that we're living in today. You know, because Hollywood totally reflects what the world actually looks like. As of 2023, the hypothetical cinematic horizon has honestly never seemed so bleak and distant. The infamously coined summertime blockbuster season has been dead on arrival, riddled with monumental flops from Disney's Elemental to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dipshit. Yeah, good work with that one Kathleen. I'll leave my email in the description down below in case any openings become available in the office. A little birdie tells me you're gonna need it soon, you donkey. Superhero movies like The Flash, a film that couldn't get its head out of its own ass, overhyped and unfinished, disrespectfully thrown to the masses like a piece of meat, made by a studio hoping and praying that the feral dogs known as the audience will rip it to shreds to the point of it being a forgettable and unrecognizable mess that it already was, to the overwhelmingly well-received, but not the overwhelmingly well-watched seventh installment in the Mission Impossible franchise with Dead Reckoning Part 1, pretty much signifying the last breath of a dying breed known as the movie star. Video already in the works on that one, wink. And with the box office losses as a whole for 2023 continuing to trend down the destructive and self-indulging path of the past years, barely clinging on to the little water donut to stay above the surface, and being held together at the roots like scotch tape by the diamonds in the rough like Super Mario Brothers, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Barbie, and yes, now Oppenheimer. The seemingly second movie of a two-movie event coined Barbenheimer, an event that was quite possibly the biggest theatrical and cultural event since Endgame. And with the film itself following what I believe the criminally underrated, but at the time of release, the underwhelming and underperforming plot that was Tenet, it's not that far of a stretch to say that the ninth installment of the roller coaster, but nevertheless legendary film career of Christopher Nolan was bolstered by all of those aforementioned facts. But in that same breath, it's easy to say that Oppenheimer is still indeed a great film that can firmly stand on its own two legs and shout from the heavens that this is a film that demands to be seen. So with that being said, and I appreciate your patience during my nonsensical but eventual concise rant, let's finally dive into Oppenheimer. Pause. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, in order to make this quick, concise, and to the point, instead of just going into a distinct rant about the plot, if I'm being honest, this is a video where that's not really needed or necessary for a historical biopic. In a non-linear but surprisingly stable storytelling structure, the movie follows Killian Murphy as he portrays the complicated life of Robert Oppenheimer, the man who would eventually become known as the father of the atomic bomb and the creator of one of the most controversial inventions ever made. The movie itself actually surrounds the hearings of one Louis Strauss played by Robert Downey Jr. about a government clearance. With Strauss being a man of power in the present day, everything seems to be going pretty routine and needless to say he'll be out in time for that 1pm tea time. All until questions start to lean more towards his personal past and association with Robert Oppenheimer, who's been suspected of communism and has pretty much been banned to the shadow realm by the US government. With the hearing now acting as sort of a placeholder and structure for the rest of the film in regards to his non-linear storytelling, we the audience live the life of Robert Oppenheimer himself. From his days as a young college lad, to his complicated personal life of being a womanizer, to his dabble and subtle interest in communism, his eventual recruitment into the Manhattan Project, to the detonation of his creation itself, and the different and tonal opposite reactions and effects that the destructive success, but also the devastating consequences of the bomb not only had on himself, 
but in the public eye as well. With the movie eventually ending on what was one of the most gripping and picturesque movie experiences I've had in the history of my life in the testing of the bomb itself. The hearings of Oppenheimer and Strauss simultaneously in their respective timelines, and leaving you with the question on if the Manhattan Project was humanity's greatest achievement, or inevitably, its greatest failure. Now, before we get into the strengths of Oppenheimer, we must first talk runtime, for that is obviously the main reason for this title of the video today, and obviously holds most of the film's issues at that very core premise. Like most Christopher Nolan films, because he's Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer is a star-studded cast. With the film itself being a biopic and having a nearly three-hour runtime spanning over a three-decade time frame, it's not an easy feat to make sure all, if not most, of the cast of characters are recognizable and engaging throughout the film. Hence, the understandable choice to go with a lot of recognizable names in general. It would have been understandable if Nolan just wanted to end the film simply after the testing of the bomb itself. I mean, an entire hour dedicated to the aftermath of the event and just the different reactions throughout the public and the greater minds of the country seems pretty unnecessary and just serves to satisfy Nolan's ego for his complicated storytelling methods. We know what happened. And I unfortunately even found myself checking out of the film a couple times in that last hour. And I know if I'm doing that... Wait. Fuck. Am I becoming these guys? But on that same note as becoming a mind-melting superhero junkie, the unfortunate thing is, is that the film itself is just not a fun watch. And while when you hear fun, your mind might jump to colorful, whimsical, and plainly stakeless entertainment, therefore insisting that this film wasn't made to be fun in the aspect of that kind of filmmaking. What I mean is, is that the film is just bleak and depressing itself. While the cast of characters are played by an amazing range of actors and actresses, none of them feel real or relatable in the slightest fashion. And while that also contributes to me having the IQ of a honeybee, so how could I possibly relate to these people in the first place? The interactions themselves just seem... off. Like a bunch of headasses in a room and they just treat each other terribly no matter what type of relationship that they have. Which is really unfortunate because the cast is simply incredible here from top to bottom. We all know the integrity in the name of Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Killian Murphy, and Robert Downey Jr. But Josh Arnett as Ernest Lawrence, Dan DeHaan, and especially Alden Ehrenreich from, uh, shit, Solo, a Star Wars story fame, are truly stars in this film, with Alden Ehrenreich being an actor who I personally really believe can be a star in this era of Hollywood. Cast that man as the new MCU Wolverine. You heard it here first. At the end of the day, for those who have the mental capacity or the personal excitement to sit through and pay attention to the details of Oppenheimer, are rewarded with a satisfying, must-watch theater-going experience, keeping you engaged with a complex plot, multiple great performances from actors of all recognizability, and mind-blowing technical practical effects and sound designs that are sure to dominate come award season. And if you're anything like me, you'll now understand why Oppenheimer is a boring piece of cinema. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, comment down below. I know this is a little late. I mean, I have already done Barbie and Barbenheimer as a whole. Self-plug, of course. But man, did Secret Invasion really demand my attention. What a shit show that's going over there at Marvel. It's really rough in these streets. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye!